All right, what's up everyone? Mori Grosin here from the Performance Hub of California, and we are not doing a breakdown here today. Um, I am doing this video, I think for the sixth time. Keep on for whatever reason, going through and has to restart, so um, yeah, this is, hopefully we'll get it right this time. Before I get into it, what I just wanna say is we're starting to go a lot more consistently into YouTube videos, so you know, if this is your first time watching us, subscribe, get, watch some of the other stuff that we have online, just because we're gonna start doing this every single day, give you guys more information. We realize that YouTube is where we have our most loyal people, and I thank you guys for that, I appreciate that, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna use it more. Right, we, we, it, it makes sense. We should just, you know, we shouldn't focus on the, the things that aren't doing, aren't, um, are not working. We should, on the, we should better focus on things that are working. So that's what we're doing. Topic of the day, process and understanding sprinting. And, and the reason why this is important is really the, the learning side of it. And really connecting to why are we doing what are we what we're doing, right? Why are we doing the drills that we're doing? Why are we doing the exercise that we're doing? Why are we working on the parts that we're doing? And do we honestly know that what we're working on is the most important thing to be working on? One of the things that I really despise is when somebody says, work on technique, run the 100 meters, focus on technique, right? And just run and think about technique. What does that mean? What does focusing on technique mean? And, you know, when I, I, your immediate probably response is, oh, yeah, you got to have the right arms, right? You got to have the right, like, the tall spine, right? You got to reach, right? Those don't mean anything, though. Honestly, I mean, that might to you, that might seem like, oh, yeah, that's what, you know, that is what I, mean, I need, right? I need to, to work on my reach. And I'm not saying that's not true, but why are you working on your reach? Are you just working on your reach because... That seems to be your weakness. Have you actually looked and broke down your sprint and seen that your top end speed reach is your biggest thing? Or that your, your start and, and how big of your step you're taking in your start is your biggest thing? Or are you just doing it because that seems to be something that is a, of, a, of a problem, right? And, and so point being is let's really connect to the numbers. Let's really get honest, right? If we're, we're looking at, um, you know, just to give a quick example, if you're looking at your financial um, numbers and you're saying, I need to make more money, but if you actually look at it, you're like, ah, I don't need to make more money. I just need to figure out how to spend less money, right? We don't need to always be, you know, once you get honest with yourself, you can start to look at things differently and start to make what's wrong. Because honestly, what happens is that if you get stuck in this technique, 100 meter mindset, that's what makes it so you stay running 11.5. That's what it makes it so you stay running 11.3. Right? Or even if you're running 10.5, that's what makes it so you stay running 10.5. It's because of the, the true sense of it, you really know too. It's so, so crazy. The further you look into it, you know that you're not doing the right thing. That's why you stay running 10.5. And you still continue to do the same stuff, even though you know you're not supposed to be, you know, even though you know that's not right. And that's why you're watching this video right now, because you know you need to work on this stuff. But for whatever reason, you don't take action on a program and accountability and commitment because you want to stay running 10-5. That's the honest reality of it. Or you want to stay running 11-5. If you want to stay running 11-5, you want to stay running 10-5, you're going to keep on just watching videos, just give free content, not hold yourself accountable, not commit to anything, and that will be your continued result. And that's just the, the fact of it, right? Done. And, and in order for, for you to actually create lasting change, right, I'll get back on to what we're talking about. In order to create lasting change, you gotta know the why. You gotta know the what. You gotta know why you're doing what you're doing. Why you're doing what exercise you're doing. If you're working on ankle stability, why are you working on ankle stability? If you're working on your arms, why are you working on your arms? Actually know why. Tell me a number, an actual numerical reason why. If you tell me that I'm working on my arms because of my transition phase, I'm a little bit long during the, the second part of my transition phase, right? I spend a little bit too much time, I would say that's a great answer. And you're right, you can, you can, your arms are part of transition phase too, that's a good reason. But you're just saying I'm working on my arms because the, my arm swing isn't good enough? That's not, there's no actual meat in that. There's no actual, there, there's not, it's being, that's not being honest. Truthfully, it's not being honest and, and so, because in reality, once you can start to look at it and say, oh, my transition phase two is something I need to work on, maybe it's arms, right? Like that's something that I've been wrong with. I've told people, oh yeah, we gotta work on your arms or we gotta work on ankle stability. And I've not been correct in that. 
which is fine. But at least now I can look at the numbers and say, look, I can tell you that it's not correct in what we're, we're doing. And now let's pivot. Now let's shift. Instead of just thinking, oh, I'm going to keep on working on arms, going to keep on working on arms. Arms aren't changing. My numbers are staying the same. And you, you have the numbers that are telling you that you're staying the same, so you're not getting the right results, but you keep on working on the same thing. Right, that's the definition of insanity. So what we want to be able to do, and this is why we've gotten, you know, in, in the past three and four months where we've started to really unlock the code of what it takes to actually run faster, we've gotten tremendous results. I mean, I work mostly work with football players and, and we've gotten two to three tenths off of probably five to ten athletes in two to three months. Because we're not afraid of the numbers. We're not afraid to look at it and say, hey, this is what it is. And I, I know I'm getting all riled up here, and I know I'm getting passionate here, but it's because I, I care. I want to see the people that are in these programs actually get to the next level. And in order to do that, you got to look at your height, you got to look at your weight, you got to look at your age group, and you got to know exactly where your numbers should be in order to. It's very technical, right? It's a very, very black and white. It's very, you can get exactly 10.5 based off of how many steps you take. How, how much it takes, how much time it takes you during your start phase, how much time it takes you during your drive phase, how much time it takes you during your top end speed phase, and each one of those transitions, each one of those, you can get very, very technical into exactly what it takes to run a 10.5, or exactly what runs a 10.4, based off your age group, based off your height, based off your weight. As long as you have all that information there, steps two, we can go into exactly what you need, okay? And once you know exactly what you need, now you just have, now, now that you know the, the what, now it's just gonna be how. Now it's gonna be, okay, now you know, we gotta work on the ankle stability. We need to work on your eccentric phase in, in your hamstring. You need to work on your concentric phase of your hip flexor. We need to work on your spine stable. You know, what are, what are exactly we're working on? And now we have a goal. Now we have the ability to be passionate, and ability to be motivated, the ability to show up for yourself is on a whole other level when you can truly connect to exactly what I need. Right, exactly what are the numbers that I need. And now, you know, now you'll show up. Now you'll get committed. Now you'll get honest. Now it's gonna be a whole another version of yourself that you didn't even know was possible. And that's that's truthfully what we're about at Performance Lab. It's not, I, I mean, we love the results. I love being able to help you run faster. I love being able to make it so you could actually achieve more. But in order for you to actually do that, right, you need to change as a person. You need to look at yourself as somebody that could run 10, five, below 10.5. Right, you need to start reassessing your, your actual standards and your expectations, and, and that's what we're about. We're about building the type of people that get maximum results. We're about building elite people from the ground up, from your mind, through your body, through the physical, the mental, the emotional, everything. When everything lines up, that's when you become an elite performer. That's what makes you Olympian. That's what makes it so you get to the NFL or the NBA or the, the MLS whatever your goal is, that's what does it, truthfully. So just in closing here, you know, I, I hope you get the process and why understanding your sprinting is important, right? And, and really get understanding the why behind it, right? If you, if you understand the why and the how, now you could really put that into action. And what I want to close off in saying is that the programs that we're doing, we're not going to take people that are not ready to come in. I only want people that are 100%. We're, we're very personalized. We're very hands-on. We're going to be able to show you the way. But if you're not willing to do that yourself, you don't see your own self-worth in it, and that's what it ends up being. I, I, I mean, I know I'm saying truthfully a lot and honestly a lot. I'm just, I just know that that's what it takes. you got to be able to be honest with yourself and look at what my beliefs are. Your beliefs are that you don't believe you're worth a program like this. And it's not even that expensive. It's 150 bucks a month. You don't believe you're worth 150 bucks a month to be able to spend that money on yourself. And honestly, I think that's sad. I think that there's more people that should look at themselves and say, I'm worth a lot more. How are you gonna make millions of dollars if you don't believe you're worth $150 a month? Right, you're just not, you're not. And in, in, in order to, to start, to you know, when you start spending more money on yourself, you start being able to create more wealth, you start being create more abundance, you start being able to accomplish your goals, and that just furthers the process. So take a risk. Take action, do something. You don't even have to do this program. Take a risk on something, right? Just decide that you're worth more in some area of your life. And by doing that, you'll start the process. And even if you end up not getting a program for another six months or a year because you have to build up your self-worth, build up your self-worth, that's fine. Just start building up your self-worth. Start knowing that you're worth more than what you're currently spending on you. Right? Make it so you're not spending money on Starbucks. You're not spending on money on, on you know, 
going out to, to eat places. If you don't have that money, spend money on you, right? Would, would make it so you're, you're, that's where your money's going and, and make it so you're accomplishing your dreams. Because a lot of times we're spending money helping other people accomplish their dreams instead of spending the money and the time and the energy on what's gonna make it so we can accomplish our dreams. Talk to you guys soon. I hope you guys are motivated to go. Let's get it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And if you did, you can subscribe down below and that way you can get updates on any of the new videos that we get. Also, if you want to, you can check out some of our other breakdowns for speed and throwing. We have exercises, also jumping mechanics videos, a lot of great stuff within our channel. Hope you enjoy.